I think it's been a great bounce on Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin, there's no doubt that from the 69,000 high all the way down to 30, 33,000, I mean, it was just the nonstop selling, right? I mean, you got sideways chop, a few small bounces, but there was nothing significant. And now we're finally seeing that, that bigger bounce, which is usual. I mean, you do have it. In fact, I'll show my charts here. So some of the cool stuff about this, right? Oh, yeah, so I remember I, that trend line from Wendy's show. Yeah, or the parallel channel. Here. Yeah, yeah, this lower channel. I mean, it's just amazing, man. Tom, I know you're a technician, and I am too. And it, it's just, you know, some people call it like, you know, voodoo or whatever they call it. But I, I just think it's amazing how it works, and you can't deny stuff when it just works over and over again. So you can see here, this line up here was a perfect line connecting. This line down here was perfectly parallel. Where did Bitcoin stop to a T? right on that line and then you bounced up and one of the interesting thing is when you get this like wedge pattern right so this was a wedge pattern connecting the highs down it was also the 20 moving average mm -hmm. the probabilities if you look historically at this pattern is that you do exactly what bitcoin did which was hit it then pull back a little bit and then bust through right so you did get that little move to the upside now the question i have is is bitcoin into resistance here according to the charts it does have some resistance here there's a neckline of a head and shoulders kind of you know trend line here you can see pivot 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 and then pivot and look at the high on bitcoin yesterday right to that point what i'm kind of you know dissecting here tom and you, you have some insight on this too is like are we going to just kind of consolidate and then break through it and go to 52,000? that's kind of my next resistance or is it going to are we going to start to head right back down so kind of like a three mountaintop kind of peak with the April, November, and then one more. And, and I've heard that a lot. Like a lot of people have come out and said, okay, you know, I think we're going to a hundred thousand even by year end, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's, I mean, that would be quite something. And I'm trying to, on a macro view, think about, well, what has to happen, right? Cause now you have the federal reserve saying, okay, well, we're going to raise interest rates. We're going to cut our balance sheet down, which is all sucking liquidity out of the system. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, somehow Bitcoin has to fight through that and fight through the damage that's been done to the psyche of the investors that bought in at 60 or 65,000, which it can do, but I, I got to believe it's going to come from institutions, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the institutions are going to be the ones that say, all right, we believe in this. This is going to be the place to be. Let's get in. And then you might see that more upside. So it's definitely interesting. I mean, ultimately, you know, I, you know, I'm, I differ a little bit. I kind of, my, what I'm thinking is, you know, and again, this is so tricky, right? So we only have since 2009 data on Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? Not so enough. we have, we have four, four year cycles, right? But it's only, you know, really it's only two, four year. Now we're in the third, four year cycle. So it's not like we have 20 years, yeah. 20, four year cycles to go off of. So you don't know for sure. You know, all you can do is kind of look at the information you're given and, and try to make an educated guess. You know, you know, think about where Bitcoin is in 50 years or a hundred years, and it's probably a, you know, 500 or a million, but I bet at those levels, it, the volatility has become so just, it's almost like a currency, right? If you look at a chart of the dollar, the dollar goes up or down slightly every day, but very minimal very volatility, slightly. but that's kind of, you know, if, if you look at it in terms of the digital gold or, or a currency, that's kind of where you want it to go to, where it becomes a place to, to get away from the government's printing, just endless supplies of cash. Right. I think it's one more domino in in the longer term way this is going to go where you know you always have the beginning players out there the, the big countries you can never expect the u.s or like you know china or england or you know you're the european union to do that initially right because they're the ones that are like trying to hold on to their currencies as being dominant they don't want any competition um and then you have kind of these rogue nations whether it's you know you know el salvador or not really a rogue nation but but russia where they're like well we don't care we're just going to upend the the status mm -hmm. quo right so you know eventually i think it does come to the bigger countries where people start to accept it but you probably have to see that regulation come in first otherwise the government is never going to want to recognize it without kind of safeguards in there now again like i think we talked about it last time I, i'm not a really person that's opposed to regulation as long as it's mm -hmm. the right regulation you know, like, I, you know, Fair I have enough. parents, I have, you know, we all have parents and we have my, my parents are in there just about 70 years old and there's no way they're going near Bitcoin at this point. Right. It's just, Probably it's just not. too weird. It's too volatile and you have, and there's not enough safeguards by the government yet. But if you can get that, I mean, again, just think about if, if a pension fund or there's, there's like a hundred trillion dollars in pension funds or whatever, you get 5% of their assets in cryptocurrencies and right away, Bitcoin's already at half a half a million dollars. And yeah. so that has to be the long way. It just has to be done right right and i think honestly the best thing for bitcoin ever 
was that China started to ban it, right? Because mm -hmm. it pushed all of the mining to the US or not all of it, but a large chunk. And now jobs, there's so many jobs. And even think about, you know, recently Microsoft bought, bought out Activision Blizzard, right? Which is another kind of pseudo crypto play. Yep. There's so much that's going to be built on top of it that it will make it impossible for the government to ever ban it, in my oh, opinion. Absolutely. It hurt, I, mean, I mean, you'd see unemployment just jump and people, you know, that's you're never going to get a politician to go and go and try to do something. I mean, think about coal, right? I mean, mm -hmm. coal is the dirty, dirty coal and, and they still can't get rid of they it. They can't get rid of it. Jobs. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's the, it's a good direction that we're heading. And I think it's very positive. It's just a matter of, you know, what is the fed going to do here? Because I, that's the biggest wild card in my book is if the fed keeps right. tightening and they suck out liquidity, the stock market goes down, it then sucks money out of crypto. And then you see do new lows on cryptocurrency. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.